Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, I am going to show you how you can get the total from a SharePoint column. Now, I've already done two videos on totaling in Power Automate, and you would think that would be enough. But no, we need more totaling. This method's even easier. So, let's have a look. I have got this list here, and if I just modify this view, and come down to the bottom and pick totals. I'm going to take the invoice amount and I could pick any of these, but I'm going to start with the sum because I think that's what most people would prefer. We can see the sum is down there. So I was looking at this list view and I was thinking, well, if it's that easy to get this sum up in a view, it must be possible to get it via an API. So I went into developer tools, pressed record, refreshed, Stop the recording and in here there is an API action which gets all of this um, data. Here we are, render list as data stream contains this field here, invoice amount dot sum and there is that value there and that comes through for every record. And the reason it comes through for every record is depending on the operation you might have chosen the group by or um, a customer filter or something along those lines. So now that we know what the URL path is to access that, let's go and have a look at a flow that does the same thing. So first of all, I just got this settings compose action, which has got the site path, the list name, and the view ID. Now that view ID is my view for all items. And the easiest way to see that is if I create a new view, I've called, I've created a new one called new and go back to all items. You can see the view ID here in the URL. <clears throat> and that is the one that I've got there. So let's test this and see what we get back. So here we have got that JSON array of results. Let's just paste it into the notepad, go up to the top. So here's our array row, and then there, this is the array element there. And we can see the final element is invoice amount dot sum, which has the total there. So if I now edit this flow and I move this sum up to here, this is just a compose action, which is getting the first, I'll go, I'll go over that in a second, let's just test it. Okay, so there is the total figure. As you can see, it matches up with that one. So let's have a quick look at these actions in a bit more detail. So we're gonna use the get by title and then render list data as stream view equals the view ID. Now, because this is a view, it will be subject to the 5,000 items limit. So however you compile this view, make sure that it does not exceed 5,000 items. And then all that I'm doing down here is just float outputs, send a HTTP request to SharePoint and the body, selecting the array, which is called row, letting the first element of that, which is zero, and then the field name there. And that gives you your total. And we can see that there. But if we modify this now, if I do say group by customer, and we've got our sum of invoice amount by customer then. So I'll save this view And so we've got our new view ID there. I go into the settings, modify this view ID. I'm just gonna move this sum, this terminate above the sum, because we'll have different field names now. <clears throat> OK. 
Okay, so let's have a look at our results now. Okay, let's go right to the top. So we've got a whole bunch of um, extra extra information now. We've got the custom account, which we can see is here, the four. So I need to edit this because we've only we've got the count, but we don't have the amount. So I'm going to edit this view. So we'll say invoice amount sum. We'll do invoice number count. So let's OK that. OK, so we've got count for and then the sum. So let's now rerun this. OK, so we've got the total for the list, the total for that customer, 10,441. There it is. The count, which is four, and actually the count for the entire list as well, which is 2,000. So it's all quite useful stuff. Um, so if we wanted to get some of these values back, now clearly this is now an array as it was before, but it's not just the first, it's not just this we're interested in, we're in it, interested in a per customer basis. So what we could do is perhaps, if we wanted to get the total invoice value for each customer, let's just play with that. I'll do an edit, and then I'll do a select. And then it will be from there, and I'll type customer, and it's going to be item customer, and then we'll do total invoice value. memory stick. Okay, the USB memory stick has been delivered. Let's carry on. Okay, that didn't work. The from property is of type object. Oh yeah, I did that wrong. Let's just check that out. What we need are the rows. I think it was called row. Let me just check. Yeah. Let's try that again. Okay, so you can see now, um, I did get um, a list of customers and their invoice value, but I got multiples because there was a row per invoice line. So what I could do Let's just add another action in here, which would be a compose. And I'll say union select select. And then I should have a distinct list of customers and their invoice value. Let's see if it worked. Yeah, there we go. So that's another little handy use for it. And really you can just modify these views. So if I was only interested in Abbott Group, for example, I could filter by Abbott Group. I'll save this view as uh, Abbott Group Invoices. So now if I take this view ID, come to here and modify this. We can see that's worked fine. We've got our four Abbott group invoices. 
and then we get down to the select. So there's actually quite a lot of different ways you could use this technique, just building a view the way that you want to see the data and then executing the HTTP request. Um, there's loads of different options really, so have a play with it, see how you get on. Let me know in the comments and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Hey, by the way, if you're still here, you might as well just press like and subscribe. You would get so many good videos. It's so worth it. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.